that last song. You just feel the Holy Spirit moving through here. Here I am. What a beautiful thing to just actually reach up to the Lord and say, here I am. If we would truly do that with all of our hearts, mind, and soul, here I am. Wow. What a blessing. What a blessing. Let's pray. Father, here I am. Yes. As I get out of the way, Father, I just pray that your Holy Spirit fills me with your word. Speak to your children, Father, so you can change them more into the image of your Son. Help us to walk that walk, Father. Teach us, I pray, today. Commune with us, comfort us, guide us, I ask, Father, in your precious name. I thank you for what your son has, did, has done on the cross for us, Father. What a blessing that was for us, that we have redemption through his blood. That we can come into your house just to worship you with the pureness of who he is. I pray, Father, that you change each one of us today. Give us a different mindset as we leave here. Give us a closeness that we want to be with you. Give us that hunger and thirst for righteousness, as that song said. Give us that, I pray, Father, that we would seek you diligently with all of our heart. Here we are, Father, to worship you and to praise your name, to give you everything that we have. Take out the stuff you don't want in our lives, Father, the junk. And replace it with your spirit. I thank you for that. We pray in that matchless and beautiful name of Jesus the Christ. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. I still get a little feedback. Thank you. There you go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. What a beautiful, beautiful day. It makes, it makes people, people nervous when we're a little bit quiet. <laughs> We've been, been on such a beautiful path of the death, death the burial, burial, and the resurrection. resurrection. The key movement of Christ that gives us our faith, because without what we're talking about today is the resurrection, there is no faith. There is no Christ. There is no belief. There is no word. Because of his resurrection and his deity, we can stand here and worship him with the pureness of heart. We talked about it because the menorah, I will talk about it a little later. If you don't know what the menorah was, that was the light that they had in the Holy of Holies. It has seven lamps on it. And it burned for eternal. And it's the burning light that God said in 1 John 5, 7, 1, 7, he said, I am light. God says, I am, or says, God is light. He is that light. And Jesus says, I am the light of the world. That light, he says, I am the menorah of the world. So all the Jews knew what he was talking about when he was telling them that I am that light. He is pointing to the resurrection. So if you look at the first lampstands, if you guys see that, and you usually see it around the holiday for the... The Jews, you will see it, but they all speak of the Messiah. The first lamp is, it actually is talking about the death, the burial, the second one. The third one is talking about the resurrection. The fourth one is talking about Pentecost. The fifth one will talk about the beautifulness of the Feast of the Trumpets. The next one is the atonement. And the last one is the tabernacle among us, the millennium. It, it all, all speaks, speaks about, about Christ. Christ. So when, when that, that was in there, there it speaks, speaks about the fullness of who Jesus was and is and is to come. Amen. Amen. Just, Just think, think about how he gave them a picture. picture. This, this is it. it. It's, it's talking, talking about it. The death, the burial, and the resurrection. The first one is we talked about the Passover. The second one is the unleavened bread, which we went a little late. Last week and today we're talking about the third one. It's called the first fruits. Jesus was the first fruits. It, it all points, points to Christ. Christ. Everything, Everything we do points to Jesus. Everything that we do, we should, our lives should point to Christ. Our walk, our talk, 
Our whole whole being should point to Christ. Christ. Our Our actions actions should point to Christ. Christ. Amen? The The resurrection. resurrection. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. risen. Our Our faith faith every day is is this. He is risen. That Jesus is risen. Yeshua is risen. Amen? Yes, indeed, he is risen. Christ, the end and I, is raised. Thank you. In Luke 24, 5, says this, Why seek the living among the dead? Because he is risen. He always has been and he always will be. Remember that. He always has been and he always will be. Remember the Pharisees, they couldn't stand him. But they couldn't stop him. They couldn't stop him. Pilate. Pilate couldn't find no fault in him. Herod. He wanted to kill him. He wanted wanted to to kill kill him. him. But you you have have to look look at that. that. Death Death could not handle Jesus Christ. Christ. Death Death could not handle him. him. And the the grave grave could not hold him. him. You You can't can't put put truth in the tomb tomb because it won't stay there there because he is risen. You You think think about about all the people people that that came came against him, the living word. Yesterday when we were leaving a place, me and my wife saw this beautiful, beautiful bush that had more flowers than I've ever seen on it. And we were we're talking talking about, man, look how how full that that bush is. is. Look Look at the flowers. flowers. There's There's so so many of them on there. there. And And I I said said to her, you know, that's that's because because of the water. water. It had an abundance of water. It had more water than it's had in years. And that thing just grabbed that water and it bloomed. And I said, isn't that like us? More of this, more we will bloom. It was a picture saying, we need more water. We, we need, need more, more of his, his word. word. We, we need, need to soak ourselves, ourselves as that plant did and, and look, look at the, the fruits of the plant. The closer we get, the more water we get of God, the, the more fruits we will have. And, and it will attract, attract more people to see the beauty that's in you because of Jesus Christ. It was, it was such an example and a simple little picture of, hey, without water, it's dead. With, with water, it's alive. The, the same, same thing with our life. We have to have more of this. Especially, Especially in the times we're living right now. We, we definitely, definitely need the word of God. And, and it, it might, might not be this pretty soon, soon so I'm telling you now, you might want to put this in here. And, and start, start memorizing all you can of his word. Whatever days we're coming into, we still serve a mighty God. God. No matter no what army you go into, what camp you're going through, Jesus is there. He will protect you, amen? He will protect you. Listen, without the resurrection, the belief in God's saving grace through Jesus Christ is destroyed. We must believe in the resurrection. We must believe in the resurrection. When Jesus rose from the dead, he confirmed his identity as the Son of God and his work of atonement, redemption, reconciliation, and salvation. Hallelujah. The resurrection was real. It was literal. It was was physical physical raising of Jesus' Jesus body from the the dead. dead. It It happened, and it is authentic. authentic. He raised from the dead. I want you to get a great great picture picture of what I'm talking about. about. If If Jesus Jesus didn't come out of that grave, grave, we have have no hope. hope. None at all. None at all. Listen. Listen. The The issue issue on which which everything everything hangs is not whether or not you like his teaching, but whether or not he rose from the dead. dead. We are the only ones that believe and have a God that became flesh and rose from the dead. Wow. If If Jesus Jesus rose from the dead, you must accept all that he said. If we believe in the resurrection, then we should accept everything he tells us and everything he guided us and everything he told us is here, and we need to accept that. If he did not raise from the dead, then why worry about any of what he said? Because it's not true. But because he did raise from the dead, we have hope, amen? We have hope. We have hope. In Revelation 1.18, in Revelation 1.18, It says, says, I am he that liveth and was dead. See, he's telling you, I am the one that liveth and I was dead. 
And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys to health and death. Reminds me of what Jesus said in John 8, 51. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that keeps my saying, He that keeps my saying shall never see death. We, as children of the Most High God, will never see death. Maybe in the physical flesh we will, but we'll never see it spiritually. Our last breath here will be the first breath with him, amen? Someday we'll be with him. I like how people say, when I die, they'll say, oh, he's gone. But Jesus will say, no, he's arrived. That gives me hope. We mourn and we cry, but he is excited because he says, my son has arrived home. That's, That's the, the greatest, greatest gift that we have someday to be in his presence. presence. Philippians 3.10 says this, that, that I may know him. I pray everyone in here that really puts that in heart, that I may know him. That I may know him. Paul goes on a little further and he says, behold. He goes on here, he goes, look. And, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made comfortable unto his death. Not that I just may know him, but I want to know his resurrection. Paul is telling him, everybody wants to know him. I hear today everywhere, oh, I know God, I believe in God. Well, I tell him the devil believes too, but they tremble. This is what he's saying here. When Paul says, I want to know him, it means I want to be with him. But, but when, when he says, says I, I want to know the power of his resurrection, it means I want to be just like him. We need to walk in that power that he has given us. Remember what he says in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 4.20, the, the kingdom of God is not in word, but it's in power. We have power. When we speak Jesus into someone's life, it brings power into their life. It changes an alcoholic. It changes a drug addict. It changes you from the old to the new. It takes the darkness out and it puts lights in you. That's the power of God. It takes an old rich sinner as I was and changes me into the son of the Most High God. That's power. We're thinking, thinking we, we want to see the power of a limb coming out. Oh, we all would like to see that out of dead race. Well, you are looking at a lot of dead people in here that was risen from the dead. We were dead without Christ, and with Christ, he's given us life. We have life. Now smile like you have life. Act like you have life. You're not a dead man walking no more when you have a relationship with Jesus the Christ. You are alive forevermore. In, in Romans, Romans 1, 2, it says, which he has promised before, before, before the prophets in the Holy Scriptures, he's told us way before about his resurrection. It says in Romans 1, 3, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which has made the seed of death, David, according to the flesh. I always love that. According to the flesh. Not the spirit, because that was eternal. But his flesh came. The word was made flesh. Verse 4 says this, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. Because of his resurrection, we have power in Christ. When we pray for someone, we ask it in the name of Jesus, that's the power. I think about all the people that just wanted to reach out and touch him. And he, and he says, says I, I felt, felt the power go out of me, or the virtue go out of me. Remember the lady that was caught with the blood of the issue? And she, she goes, goes, only if I can touch him. him. It's, it's unlawful to be around someone that has blood. blood. It, was it was unlawful, unlawful but she didn't she care. She took the chance. chance. And she, she reached out and said, if I could just touch this him, him, I would be made whole. That's faith. If we can just reach out and touch Jesus sometimes when we're down and out, just reach out and touch him. He can change you, and he will change you, and he will mold you if you just reach out. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. I like that. Take a coal from your heaven and touch my lips. Boy, do I need that a lot. <laughs> Amen. I'm just telling you. By the resurrection of the dead, that's by the resurrection which Christ was the first fruits. Remember, I'm talking the first fruits, the third candlestick on the lamp. 
It's, it's called, called the, the Feast of the First Fruits. Fruits. That's why in Luke 24, 6, it says, He is not here, but risen. Remember, he respect unto you when he was in Galilee. He's not here. You come to see a dead man in the grave. He's not here. He's not here. Who was the first one that said he was risen? The angels. They spoke of his glory. What you see, he isn't here. He is risen. Even the angels knew he was not there. The power, the power it must have been, that light that came. His, his body, body was in there, says the flesh. Didn't he say on the cross, Father, take my spirit? His soul went down to the depths and spoke to everybody. Can you imagine that power when that body was risen out of that grave? That light, how it became just so much power, boom, into his glory that he was in. Because he said he seek that glory once I had. Hallelujah, the power that's in Jesus Christ. The, the whole, whole system, system of Christianity, Christianity rests, rests upon, upon one, one fact. Jesus is risen from the, the dead. dead. Your, Your walk rests upon that. that. Your talk rests upon that. that. Your, Your life rests upon, upon that, that, that he was raised from the dead. Genesis ends, ends with Joseph's Joseph death. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy ends, ends with Moses' death. death. And, and Joshua, Joshua ends, ends with Joshua's, Joshua's death. death. But the, the gospel, gospel ends with, with Jesus' resurrection. There is, there is no, no death, death in him. him. Amen. Amen. It, it is, is finished. finished. That's, That's why the resurrection was the Father's amen to Jesus, Jesus saying, it, it is finished. It is finished. That was the Father going through the Son and telling everybody, listen, listen it is finished. My words came true. It is finished. I love, I love that. that. The, the first, first fruits. fruits. The first, first fruits. fruits. In, In 1 Corinthians 15, 20, it says, But now Christ is risen from the dead, and he has become the first fruits of those who were fallen asleep. Can you imagine when he went down there and led the captives and captives? Can you imagine that Adam looked upon him and Abraham looked upon him and King David? Could you imagine what they were seeing? Woo! What would it have been like to be in the center of earth when he was going down to paradise that day? All the old saints and prophets of the Old Testament, there he is, there he is, and they're getting all excited. You can read where it says the grave is open and they came out. Think about that. They got excited when they see Jesus. We should get excited when we hear about Jesus too, amen? We should be excited. We should, we should be greatly, greatly excited. excited. As, As the, the first fruits offered, offered to God, God the, the Jews were assured that God would bless them the whole hearts. So by the resurrection of Jesus, our resurrection is ensured. Yes, I, 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 you, you hear it? Thank you. You can just turn it down and put it somewhere. Thank you, John. In, In Revelation 1 5, it says this. And, and from, from Jesus Christ, who is a faithful witness, the, the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the king of the earth, unto him that loves us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. The first begotten of the dead was Jesus the Christ. He was the true resurrection. He was God in the flesh being brought back. Hallelujah. John 11, 25, Jesus said unto them, I am the resurrection and life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, he shall live. He shall live, even though you were dead. Like I said, we were dead without Christ. Everybody that has not been born back into the kingdom of God is dead. You need Jesus. You need to be born back into his kingdom. That's why, that's why Jesus talked to Nicodemus. One must be born again before he can see the kingdom of heaven. One, One must be born of the Spirit and of water before you can enter into the kingdom of heaven. You must be born again. We need that to be preached more to people out there, to kids, to teenagers, to everybody. You must be born again before you can enter into the kingdom of the Most High God. And He gives you that new spirit. I think that's beautiful. Exodus 3.14 3, 14 says, says, God said unto Moses, I am that I am. Jesus made that statement. Seven times Jesus made that statement. 
But remember, remember everything, everything that God is, Jesus is. Jesus is. Everything, everything that God has, Jesus has. Everything that God does, Jesus does. And everything that God says, Jesus says. Because, because God, Jesus is fully God. God. I want, I want you, to you to listen to that, that he is fully God, God because Jesus, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door of the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am, I am. And then John 5, I mean, 8:58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. You know, you know what, what happened, happened next? next? The, the Jews, Jews picked up stones to stone him. him. In and another in gospel, he says, why do you stone me? For my works? And they said, said, not because of your works, but because you being a man, man make yourself out to be God. God. See, See they, they knew what he was proclaiming. proclaiming. He, they, they had, had no doubt as who he was saying that he was. was. When, when he, he says, says, I am, they knew. They wanted to take stones and stone him because it was blasphemy to say that a man can be God. Because God, God took his word and manifested it into flesh. Hallelujah. Death, Death is no longer, Death is no longer a prison, prison but, but a passage into, into God's presence. Death is no more a prison, but it is a passage into God's presence. That's, That's why in John 11, 26, it says, Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And then his statement looks at him and says, Believest thou this? Do you believe what I'm saying? Watch what I do with your brother Lazarus. I'm going to call him. And watch him come forth. I'm going to show you the power I have. Lazarus, come forth! I can only have pictures of this guy coming out like this all wrapped up. Unwrap him! Can you imagine everybody watching that? That, that kind of power, power to see, see that? How would we think today if we got, got to witness that? that? Would, would we, we change, change our life, life a little bit? bit? Makes, Makes you think, think doesn't, doesn't it? Makes, Makes you, you think. think. Anyways, Anyways, Revelation 5, 5 6, 6 is pretty, pretty interesting. It says, And I beheld, and lo, in, in the midst of the throne, in the midst of the throne, and the four beasts, beasts in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb. Stood a lamb. An innocent, an innocent lamb, lamb. As, as it has, has been, been slain, slain having, having seven horns, having seven, seven eyes, which are the seven, seven spirits of God sent forth into the earth. earth. Well, that's, that's interesting, interesting. Isn't, isn't it? Seven, seven horns, seven, seven eyes, seven spirits. The seven horns, the horns is an emblem of power. power. The, the seven is a number of perfection. perfection. The, the seven, seven horns may denote the almighty power of Jesus Christ. That's what that represents. The seven eyes is his infinite knowledge and wisdom. His infinite wisdom and knowledge, especially the treasure of wisdom, laid up in him to be communicated to the church by the seven spirits. You say, what are the seven spirits? Well, turn to Isaiah. Chapter 11, 11. and I'm going to give, give you the seven, seven spirits. spirits. Matter, Matter of fact, fact let's, let's read that before, before I give it to you. you. Isaiah, it's in your Old Testament. Testament. Little, little after Proverbs, you go a couple over, go to 11, chapter 11. 11. Around, Around verse 2, but I'll read one, one on. Say amen, amen when you're there. there. That was a... Okay, here, here we go. go. And, and they, they shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. This is talking about Jesus. It's a prophecy of the Messiah. It says here in verse 2, And the Spirit of the Lord shall, be, shall rest upon him. And the Spirit, listen, here you go, and the Spirit of wisdom, and the Spirit of understanding, and the Spirit of counsel, and might, in the, the spirit of knowledge, in the, the spirit of fear of the Lord. He just he gave you the seven spirits that's, that's full of him. him. Let's go over those. The spirit of the Lord is a supernatural power source that creates God's thoughts in our heart. 
Did you hear what I said? said? The The spirit spirit of wisdom wisdom is all of God's supernatural thoughts thoughts himself. The spirit spirit of understanding understanding is all of God's God's personal illumination of those thoughts. thoughts. The spirit of counsel is God's personal instructions for godly choices. The spirit of strength is God's supernatural ability to perform those thoughts in our lives. The spirit of knowledge is seeing God through manifest in our life and action. And the last one, the fear of the Lord is walking in God's love and truth, fleeing anything that would quench his spirit. Remember Paul says, quench not the spirit. Quench not the spirit. You know it says that in uh, Psalms verse 12, I mean chapter 12 verse 6 and 7 says the word of the Lord is pure words as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. And then he tells them, O Lord, thou shalt keep his word. He shall keep it from this generation and forever. We're in that forever. His word has been kept. It said it is settled in heaven forever. Thy Thy word is powerful, powerful, amen. amen. His His word is what changes us. His His word is Jesus. That's That's what that that word comes when we look at that that word, it means Jesus. I mean, it's it's the almighty God's God's thought. Remember I told you, you can't hear his thoughts, you can't can't see his thoughts because they're invisible, but when they're spoken, you can understand his thoughts. And that word is manifested in the flesh. And came came out out to speak speak who God is. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. And the the same was in the beginning with God. Remember, all things were made by him, and without him nothing was made. Nothing was made. Nothing was made. Everything came through Jesus Christ. That's why it's so important. And I want you to say the seven spirits are also the candlesticks, too. They They go go right right to line line, to line, line. the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the wisdom, and you've got the spirit of understanding and the counsel. You know which one the counsel is? Anybody want to guess which candlestick that is? Because someone is our counselor. I'm giving you a hint. Who does it say that is is our counselor? The Holy Spirit. That is the day of Pentecost. The fourth in the, in the middle, middle candle is the one of Pentecost that is poured out upon us where the power comes from. That's, That's the spirit of counsel. And then the, the next one is the strength and the knowledge and the fear of the Lord. All, All those point to the same thing as Jesus, the death and the burial and the resurrection and soul of Pentecost and all the feasts I talked about. And I was telling my wife today, did you know that every feast lands, the prominent feast all lands upon the full moon? Every one of them, exactly on the full moon. So when we see the Feast of the Trumpets, it will be a full moon. The Passover was, guess what? Full moon. You walked out, it was beautiful out. Matter of fact, it was a beautiful moon, too. It looked like it was big. It's just glowing. In Romans 10, 9, it's important because it says that if you confess, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and that you believe in thy heart, listen, that you must believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you know what he says? You will be saved. So it takes that confession with the mouth, but you have to believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. He's talking about there's power in the resurrection. You have to believe that he was resurrected from the dead. If you don't believe in the resurrection, then it's in vain. Your walk walk is is in vain. vain. Your Your belief is in vain. vain. Isaiah 25 25, says, He will swallow up death in victory. Hallelujah. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. Not some, but all. All those things that we have cried about, He's going to wipe those away someday. They're going to be taken away from us. It even talks about in Revelation. Every tear will be wiped away. We might might mourn mourn and we we might cry cry now, but that day we get in heaven, there will not be no more tears. What a a blessing. That's That's when you shout shout hallelujah. It's It's going to be a great day. day. And 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 Hosea 13, 14 14 says, I will ransom them 
from the power of the grave. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. Oh, death, I will be thy plague, O grave. I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from my eyes. I will die for them and rage for them. And death has no more sting upon you or in me. We will not see death as I told you. That second death will not take care of you unless you, you don't have that relationship I'm talking about with Jesus Christ. And 1 Corinthians 15, 54 says this. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality, and, and then shall we be brought to pass the saying that is writ writ written, death, death is swallowed up in victory. Amen? Amen. Death, death has, has been, been swallowed up in victory because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In Isaiah 26, 19, it says, they, the, Thy, thy dead, dead men shall live. live. That's, That's what, what I was telling you. you thy dead in this church, church shall live. live. When, when you, you give your life to Christ, you're not dead man walking no more. We, we have, have a lot, lot of dead, dead people out there walking. And the only no way, way they can come alive is when you give them the gospel. You give them life. You bring life to them through Jesus Christ. He uses you as a vessel to bring the gospel to the ends of the world. Amen. If Jesus rose from the dead, then you have to accept all he said. Amen. Preaching is in vain. I'll give you that scripture in 1 Corinthians 15, 14. It's, I mean, it says this. And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching vain. And your faith is also vain. Paul's glad to know if he didn't rise from the dead, everything they do is in vain. We're sitting here today in vain. But because he did rise from the dead, everything we do is to his glory. Think, Think about, about that. I, I love, love it because, because you know the striking facts. Is the resurrection is the center of a miraculous belief. If he did not literally raise from the grave, not only is his integrity, reliability, and truth is at stake, but also in First Corinthians four five one says, "Moreover, brother, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand." Verse 2, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 2. By which you are also saved, if you keep in memory that which I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Look at verse 3. For I have delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. Here you go. How Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. Verse 4. And he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scripture. Here is what Paul is preaching the same thing I'm preaching, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. He's letting them know this is the gospel. This is who we serve. He has power. The grave could not hold Jesus. Wow. That's power. That's power. I want to finish with It says, it says, and the dead, dead are perished. First Corinthians 15, 18. It says, and they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. Verse 19. That's, That's the dead are perished. Our state is most miserable. Within First Corinthians 15, 19, it says this. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of most men. I mean, we are of all men most miserable. But because of his resurrection, we have hope. We have hope. We have hope. Not only that, we have love. We have joy. We have peace. Think about that. You have love. You have joy. You have peace. And the rest of it, we need the long suffering, the gentleness, the goodness, the faith. The meekness, the temperance. You know, you know it, it says, says against such as his law. He gives us that as a law. A new a law I give you. A new commandment I give you. To love one another. I think when love pours out of us, and true love pours out of us, it attracts. It attracts forgiveness. 
It, 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 it takes, takes the anger out of people. It takes the, the, the meanness out of people when you just give love. When you retaliate with a smart answer, you open a can of worms. You do. When you say something back you ought not say, it starts a war. But when you come back with love, it stops everything. It stops it. We, we need, need more love. love. And, I'm and I'm not talking about us to be walked on as carpet. carpet. I'm, I'm talking, talking about the love of God gives us in us to love the sinner as he is. We would we learn, learn to love more out there and see people, people as a lost soul. Your, your heart, heart would break. break. It, it wouldn't be happy. It would break because they are dead people walking. walking. When we, we go out and walk among the people today, there's a lot of dead people walking around you. And, and they, they will, will stay, stay dead, dead until, until they receive Jesus, Jesus Christ. That, that should, should break, break your heart. heart. That, that should break, break your heart. To know, know that, that their path is a place that none, none of us would want to go to. to. But, but we, we have, have a choice. choice. And the, the choice, choice is this, to confess Jesus Christ. With the heart one leaves us righteousness, with the mouth confession is made to what? Salvation. And remember, remember whosoever, whosoever call upon him shall be saved. I know it says we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of him. We have. There's none righteous, no, not one. Not one in here is righteous, but Christ has covered us with his righteousness. So God's looking at us on his son as he sees you and me because of his righteousness. I was reading this morning where it was saying that our sins are forgiven and he remembers them no more in Isaiah 43. If you want, you want to read, read that, that chapter, chapter that's, that's where he says, says I, I know no know other Savior but me. I read in Titus, Jesus, Jesus said he's a Savior. When people want to argue about how many Saviors they have, and if they're Jesus is in God, you take them to Isaiah where it says, I know no other Savior. You go to 45, it says, I am the only rock, and I know no other rock. I am God, and I know no other gods. There is none other. But Jesus says, I am. Same as Exodus, Exodus, remember 314? What, what should I, I tell who sent you? you? The great I am. And Jesus said, that's, that's why they were going to stone me. We serve the great God in flesh. We serve the mighty Father. We serve the Holy Spirit. We serve Jesus the Son. Those three which make one is God Almighty, which is the title given to Jesus in Isaiah 6, 9-6. And his, his name, name shall be called Wonderful, wonderful Counselor, Counselor, Mighty God, God and, and the Everlasting Father, Father and the and Prince of Peace. We serve a risen Savior, Savior that loved, loved you so much that he took your life upon the cross. And he, he loves you. you. He, he wants, wants to see you do well, well not do bad. bad. Remember, he remembers your sins, sins no more. more. When, when I read, I read that, that this morning, morning, I was weeping in my heart saying, thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I don't, I don't understand, understand how you do it. it. Because, because if someone, someone does us wrong, we remember forever. And we, we still, still talk, talk about it. Do you, you know, know in Proverbs says, says a whisper will separate the strongest of friends? friends. A, a whisper. Whisper, whisper means, means the gossip, gossip behind someone's back. back. A whisper will separate the strongest of friends. But we have a God that says, I will remember your sins no more. I cast them into the forgetfulness of the sea. Lord, I wish I had that mind to forget things. I think everybody in here wish they could forget things. But the enemy will keep bringing up your past. Amen. He keeps bringing up how lousy you are. Every time you mess up, he points his finger at you. And all, and all you, you gotta, gotta say, say is this, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I've, I've had, had dreams, dreams I've told you before, before that, that would make, make you scared. It could be a horror story made out of them, movies. And, and only, only one, one thing, thing saved me in those, those dreams. dreams. It was that, that name of Jesus. Jesus. And, and they say, speak, speak his, his name, and I'll, and I'll say in the name, name of Jesus, 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 and I would be let go. And that evilness, evilness in the room would be cold, would disappear. And the evilness, evilness is trying to grab your mind to take you off of him. 
look, we're, we're at, at a war, war and we're, we're wrestling, wrestling against prince of power, these empowers and powers in high places. places. You, you don't, don't believe it, it's happening. And, and you, you have, have Jesus Christ and you have the Holy Spirit comfort you and guiding you, you through this. this. That's, That's why, why we, we take, take the full armor of Christ upon us so, so we can fight the war and we can fight the good fight. And that's what I was remembering while I was reading this. Listen, Lord, I am going to run the race to win it. I don't care how many times I fall, how many times I stumble, I am going to run this race and I'm going to finish it because of Jesus Christ. And, and I, I believe, believe that, that with all, all of my heart. heart. I, I wish, wish I wouldn't mess up tomorrow. And I'm, I'm not, not going to mess up in Christ. Christ. But, but this, this old stinky flesh, flesh sometimes gets in there. But thank God, God he covers us. us and he washes us. And he lifts us and he calls us sons and daughters. Because of that love, I have hope. It's, it's not, not because, because of me. me. I, know I know who I am. Every, Every one, one of you know who you are. If, if you, you were true of yourself and looked look in the mirror, you'd know, know who you really are. are. And, and you, you do know who you are. are. That's, That's why, why we need Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. There's, There's nobody, nobody in here who thinks they're righteous. Sometimes we act like we're better than the person next to us. You're not. You're not. We all, without Christ, stink. We do. But because, because of the beautifulness of Jesus Christ, Christ I, can I can sit up here and be as happy as I can. Because of him, I am, I am who I am, am, a son of the living God. God. I thank God, God for that because, because he is risen. I can sit up here and preach the gospel to you. Because he is risen, I can walk tomorrow knowing I can be closer to him. That's, That's why, why Paul says, I want to know the power of the resurrection. I think if each one of us starts praying, Lord, I want to know the power of your resurrection, we would see a different church, we'd see a different community, we'd see a different walk within our lives. Lord, give me that power of the resurrection walk, that when I speak your goodness and your truth, people get changed. God uses us, people. Don't, Don't think, think it's, it's over. over. Wherever, Wherever we, we go, go, God opens a door for you. You just have to fulfill it. it. I mean, I, I can tell story over stories where I go and people will just talk and I open up. We talk about the gospel. We give this. We share with them. We talk to them. The other day, we were praying in the middle of Costco. Me and this guy holding our hands and we were praying. He was praying out loud. I didn't witness it. I didn't call him. He kept going down the aisle searching for me. It's, it's not, not me. me. He, he saw, saw Jesus. Jesus. If he, he would have saw, saw me, he would have ran the other way. But he, he saw, saw something in us that had, had a light that shines. And he, he was loud and he prayed, prayed right in the middle of the place. place. I, was I was like, like what boldness. boldness. And, and I loved it. it. Here we are holding hold our hands praying. praying. And then he who was around us because of Jesus is the light of the world. Remember that. He says, I am the light. I am the resurrection. I'm, I'm the, the one, one that gives life. I'm, I'm the, the one, one that gives you power to keep going on and the strength, strength to be who you are in him. Today, when you leave, remember this. There's power in the resurrection life. Start walking as you are resurrected, as a new man in Christ. Remember, the old man died with him. Paul writes that in Romans 6, go to 7. You... Your dead, dead man is dead. dead. It, it went, went to the, the cross, cross with him. him. But, but now you bear the resurrection as he was raised. raised. You, you were raised, raised in him. We, we need to walk in that power. Anybody, Anybody agrees with me? me? Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads. heads. Father, Father, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you for your greatness and your holiness. But I thank you the most for this. He is risen. I pray, Father, you do a new work in everybody in here today. That you right now, that you would be changing their mind that you be changing their heart and give them the strength to go out into this crazy world and still be the light that's shining in this darkness. Fill them, Father, with your glory. It's your glory. Fill them with your gospel. Fill them with your word, Father. I pray that your word will just pour out of their mouths. Everything they have read, Father, I pray that you bring it back in remembrance that when they speak to someone, it flows the greatness of your word. Oh, thank, thank you for, for your gift, gift to us, Father, your, your son, son, Jesus Christ. Christ. 
I pray, pray, Father, that you would bless us as we listen to this next song. I pray that you would just anoint John as he just brings us to this song and worship. I'm so thankful that he's coming up to sing again. I just love it. What a, what a privilege for us. Bless him for this, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, and we all say, Amen. John? Kevin, are you going to help John set up?